copycats what's happening I always just love it when you click on a video to watch and you think you're going to see what you clicked on but you have to listen to five or ten minutes of that person bantering on about something totally irrelevant to what you thought you were going to watch not going to happen here we're going to get right to business I had a viewer that uh, recently asked uh, can you do a video on the cost of traveling on a motorcycle so this will be my two cents worth um, what I've come up with and I have done some traveling on the motorcycle so I kinda have a ballpark figure of what what you could expect I'm riding a uh, 1999 FL STF a fat boy Harley Davidson fat boy it's got a 1340 80 cubic inch motor which gets somewhere in the ballpark of about 28 miles to the gallon depending on how you ride it you ride it hard you're going to use a little more fuel if you ride it easy you use less fuel so to begin with we're gonna plan a trip let's say and let's just say for because I have experience of traveling this route that I'm gonna go from here in northeast Ohio I'm gonna ride to Sturgis South Dakota we'll just use that as, as kind of a uh, uh, basic plan for for this trip give me an idea what we're looking at cost wise there and just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from uh, I'm gonna start here right at the bottom of Lake Erie or in that ballpark northern Ohio and I am going to travel past Chicago Lake Michigan all the way up through Wisconsin uh, across Minnesota into South Dakota and all the way to Sturgis, South Dakota. Uh, but before you decide to take a trip on your motorcycle, take some preliminary precautions first. Uh, check your tires, make sure you don't have a bald tires. Uh, if you do, get some new rubber on there. Change the oil, give it a tune-up, make sure it's in good running order, check the nuts and bolts, tighten things up, uh, prepare a little bit for your trip. I'm not going to talk about what you're going to bring along, but uh, in, in the most regard, uh, but there are three factors that are going to be the major cost for you. Number one is going to be fuel, and of course, depending on what kind of motorcycle you use some will use a, get a lot better gas mileage some will get worse gas mileage so I'm talking about my bike alone uh, you're gonna need fuel uh, you're gonna need lodging you're gonna need somewhere to stay along your trip and you're going to need food so let's say on this trip uh, we'll give it a week say I'm gonna do seven days uh, there and back so it'll be a round trip. It'll be kind of a whirlwind tour because you're usually going to spend at least two days getting out there and then two days back. So that's four out of the seven. That leaves you three days in Sturgis to do whatever you're going to do. Normally I would take two weeks if I was going to go do this trip, but just for purposes of figuring costs, we're just going to do one well, seven day week. Okay, let's start out with, with fuel. Like I said, my bike will get uh, 28 miles to the gallon average. Uh, the way I ride it, probably a little bit less. And we're looking uh, to go from here to Sturgis is around uh, 1,280 miles, give or take. Uh, you could probably add a little bit to that if you take a little side detour. Say you got to go five six seven miles off the beaten path to get to a campground or a hotel um, you're going to add more mileage to your trip the 1280 miles is just a straight shot so when i figure out my gas mileage on that uh, i'm going to use somewhere in the ballpark of between 46 to 50 gallons of fuel to make that trip on my bike I'm going to well here in Ohio that's just it's probably under three dollars a gallon for fuel 
I don't know what it is across the country, but I know if you're on the highway, a lot of times the prices can go up pretty high. Um, you get off at some of those uh, rest areas, you can pay over $4 a gallon. They really rape you there. So, but let's just say if I went and average it out at $3 a gallon, which is pretty liberal, I'm, I'm going to be looking at somewhere around uh, $140 one way. Uh, if it's a round trip, I'm going to be spending somewhere around $275 to $300 just on fuel alone. Okay, so, and, and like I say, that price can can be pretty variable. And that's just the trip there and back. Now, if I, when I get to Sturgis, if I'm going to tour around and ride all over the Black Hills, there's more money involved in fuel there. So, uh, But just for the trip out there and back, I'm looking, I'm just going to say somewhere around 300 bucks. let's say, I'm going to spend on fuel for the round trip. Now the second thing we're going to have to do is talk about lodging. What are we going? To, where are we going to stay? How are we going to afford to to pay for a, a, a bed, a place to rest? There's a couple different ways you can look at that. You can go camping. Uh, you can bring a tent along, a sleeping bag. You can sleep on the ground. That's probably going to be your cheapest method. In fact, you could if you're real. Uh, adventurous you could boondock you in other words you can pull into a farmer's field and set up your tent in in kind of a little reclusive area where nobody's going to see you and camp for free of course you'll be primitive you won't have any facilities there or anything but it's a free night stay if you want to go that route you're taking a risk though of having a shotgun poked in your face or maybe the popo showing up and evicting you off the premises in the middle of the night probably not in your best interest but there's a lot of people that do that you know that just kind of uh hey this i see this little dirt road goes back here into this cornfield i'm going to go back in there find a little private spot set up my tent spend the night and hit the road in the morning and uh that way it doesn't cost you a thing if you're going to stay at a state park let's say uh i've spent as little as eight dollars to camp at a state park but I think your average is going to be for a primitive site, and that means no electric, no water, no nothing, just a place to set up your tent. You're going to spend uh, average around 15 to $25. If you want an electric hookup, say you want something to charge your, your phone up or, or whatever you need to do with electricity, um, might go up to like $35 for a night. Still a lot cheaper than staying in a hotel, though. So, that's your option to camping, which is probably the more budget method. Now, if you're going to stay in hotels, you know, maybe you need a shower, uh, you want a comfortable bed to sleep in. Not everybody can sleep on the ground, you know. The average price for a hotel stay per night is right around $125. But again, it depends on where you go and where you stay because especially if you're going to the Sturgis Rally, prices get jacked up for that time. So you could spend over $200 a night to stay in a hotel. If I'm going to average out $125 a night, though, I'm looking at somewhere on a, on a one week so that would be six nights that I would be staying. Uh, I'm going to spend somewhere around $750 and upward to stay in a hotel. And that price could easily uh, go up quite substantially depending on, on the route you take and where you're going to stay. So you're looking at camping, uh, let's just say about for that trip, uh, 175 bucks, 180 bucks for a week. Hotel, 750 to 800 for the week, depending on where you stay. Now these are all pretty pretty liberal figures. So, and I'll, I'll tell you what, where where I fell in once I I get all this done here. And now the average person is going to eat on the road traveling on the road you're going to eat about 
fifty dollars worth of food every day you you may want it breakfast you may want lunch and a good substantial dinner you're going to be hungry you got to stop and eat somewhere there are other other alternatives for that for breakfast you may want to throw a box of uh, granola bars in your saddlebag and you can whip out a granola bar munch it down breakfast is done hit the road uh, it doesn't cost you much of anything lunch you're going to be hungry you may want to grab a sandwich or something depending on where you go um, if you're on the highway and you stop the like I said these roadside uh, uh, rest stops can can really jack up prices on food there too and once you get to the Black Hills the prices are going to go way up on food too so you're going to spend a lot of money on food but let's just say if you spend fifty dollars a day seven days you're going to be somewhere around three hundred fifty dollars a week just on food alone so let's throw all that together when we add everything up if you were going to spend a week camping sleeping in your tent I'm going to say a liberal figure is going to be about $825 for the week if you're going to stay in hotels and this includes hotels fuel and uh, food about fourteen hundred dollars a week so you're doubling the cost of everything by staying in a hotel those are just some ballpark figures on a one-week trip to Sturgis and back from my place which is about 1,280 miles when I traveled out there to Sturgis and back and I stayed for almost two weeks my total costs were uh, almost <laughs> I'd say they were closer to three grand <laughs> because of all the money I spent and especially when I was there uh, buying souvenirs um, eating good high-end meals and uh, paying fees some of the parks you have to pay a fee to get in and out of uh, there's tolls on some of the roads you have to pay so it adds up really quick it adds up really quick so anywhere between uh, 800 to 1400 dollars depending on what budget you're going to take for one week to Sturgis and back from my place now some other things I might throw in there uh, if you're staying in a hotel or a motel now uh, depending on where you are or you park your motorcycle you may not be able to see your bike from your room you're leaving it sit in a parking lot and unattended while you're in the room and I don't know if your bike has uh, an alarm system on it or what and whether that's even going to matter or not it's pretty easy for somebody to toss a bike into the back of a pickup truck and take off with it I stayed at a motel you know one level motel one time along my journey where you could pull the bike right up to the almost to the door there was this little sidewalk between the door and the parking lot and then you, so my bike was parked right there locked it up like I always do and stayed in the room right there where I could pull the curtain open and there's my bike sitting right there problem was it was kind of a seed bag hotel or motel so there was traffic going in and out of that parking lot all night long uh, I don't know what was going on if it was some shady deals going on there or what but definitely something above the ordinary going on there uh, you could hear cars coming in you know coming through right next to where my bike was parked I could hear voices talking throughout the night so I was constantly aware of that and always looking out the window to see make sure my bike was okay obviously I didn't leave anything on the bike I unloaded all my gear and because I, I was my main mode of, of uh, stay was camping so I had my tent my sleeping bag my bedroll everything was on the bike all my everything I took off brought it in the motel room with me because I didn't trust leaving it out there with all that commotion going on all night long 
And I would have been even more worried if I would be staying in a hotel where I could not see the parking lot or my motorcycle. I think I'd have to get up a couple times that night and, ha and head out to the parking lot just to make sure my bike was okay. When you're in a tent, you know, you can pull the bike right up right next to your tent. You could almost tie a string around your toe and tie the other end of your bike and uh, or hang a bell from it or something so you'd know if anything fishy was going on there. But just some ideas I throw out there for traveling. So, you know, there you go. You got fuel, you got food, you got lodging. And then there's all kinds of other fees and things that go in there in between. Souvenirs. I can't begin to tell you how much money you budget for and then how much you're going to actually spend. Unless you're a very, very thrifty spender. Um... <clears throat> You could be in the, end up spending a lot more money than what you budgeted for. So there you go, guys. There's my uh, two cents worth on what it costs to travel on a motorcycle. As I said, you're going to have to do the math yourself for your own bike. If you don't know what kind of gas mileage you're getting, in most cases you can probably go online and look at the specs for your bike and they'll give you some kind of a ballpark estimated mile per gallon that you can get a pretty good ballpark figure on how much fuel you're going to need. As for food and things like that, it's your own preference, how you like to eat, where you like to eat. You could bring your own ramen noodles along and cook over a fire and not spend any money if that's the way you want to do it. Uh, so there you go guys that's the story today hope you enjoyed it hope it helped out if you're planning a trip it might be not might not be, might not be a bad idea to start planning now if you're going to take a trip this summer or this spring until next time guys ride hard 